Hi guys, it's Ben here with the Brighton versus Liverpool preview. We're only one day on from the Stoke game, but it's already time to look ahead to the next fixture. It's another away fixture in the Premier League. The games are coming thick and fast. We've got Spartak Moscow coming up very soon, which is a crucial game. We've got Everton, then we've got West Brom, Bournemouth, Arsenal. A massive month, one that's going to define our season in terms of where we sort of... Uh, where we target? Do we target second, third? Is top four going to be the, the main sort of target this season? Are we still in the title race? Probably not. I mean, definitely not. But, you know, this is a big month in terms of progression in the Champions League and sort of keeping pace in the Premier League. Um, so, and Brighton's one of those winnable games. Before we get into this, I just want to give a quick shout out to my mates at Love Full of Conquer. They make these t shirts. I've got quite a few of them. If you want to check them out, go to the link in the description. They're pretty cheap, pretty nice. See some jackets, jumpers, and all that as well. So make sure you check it out. Let's get on with the preview. So, as I was saying in my, in my uh, day trip, which if you've not seen, do check it out from Stoke Away, which I was at in the freezing, freezing cold in uh, Staffordshire. Um, we were very, very good. A, a lot of positives to take. To, you know, despite the rotation, we the movement was still there. We were very fluid in attack. We were relatively organised in defence. The midfield was okay. Um, I mean, Emery Chan's performance divided opinion. And my opinion was that he was actually quite poor. He didn't turn with the with the ball enough. He played with his back to Stokes' goal. He was very reluctant to drive forward and turn. The, very frustrating, it was too slow, we were very lethargic in the first sort of 10 minutes and then the rest of the team kind of picked it up. Chan did to an extent, but he still wasn't driving forward like I know he can, like we've seen Naby Keita do for Leipzig as well, which you know even whetted my appetite further for someone like him to come in and uh, transform midfield. I know people get frustrated with Henderson for not doing it enough, and he doesn't do it enough either. Van Alden kind of did. It was all a bit too slow at times, but when we were on, we were truly on. It was phenomenal. It was all about Mane and Salah, really. I mean, when Salah came on I thought Oxley Chilin was great beforehand as well. Um, Solanke was good, Firmino did well sort of I mean there's not a more selfless striker in the Premier League than Firmino. The way he just occupies defenders creates all the space for Salah and Mane or whoever else is behind playing either side of him. Um, it, it's special and you know obviously the unselfish way he allowed Mane to get that goal. We could have easily tapped that in over the line but you know even if he was nearly offside he would have been tempted. But it was a huge win at Stoke, 3-0. It's, it's very unlivable like to go there and win 3-0. I think that's probably our most convincing win over them away from home since they came to the Premier League. Um, and it sets, it, up, it sets us up brilliantly and it proves that rotation should be okay. Oxley chamberlain really fit into that system well. It was a 4-4-2 at times with him on the right and Mane on the left. Uh, Chan and Van Alden kind of sitting in, uh, being quite conservative with their runs, and you had Firmino and Slanky up front. I thought the fullbacks were great, especially Joe Gomez, who I gave man of the match. Um, so look, I mean, we've got momentum going into this Brighton game. It's going to be a similar test, if not, you know, the physical test. You know, we had Peter Crouch up front against us there, and you know, their, their defence is quite physical. Stoke had Shakiri buzzing around there. I thought he was actually excellent. I thought Jalen played well as well at times. I thought Stoke actually did acquit themselves very nicely. Um, there's very little they could do about um, our goals. I guess they switch off a bit uh, for the first one, and I guess they can defend the, uh, the third one a bit better. I think it was Shawcross or was it uh, no Peters that got caught out. But Brighton are going to be a tough side. They're, they're doing well. They're tenth in the league. Um, they're, they're sort of getting points in the games that you deem winnable. You know, they're picking up a, a point against Crystal Palace, a point against Stoke, a win away at Swansea. Um, they lost at United, they're quite unfortunate there, but they've not disgraced themselves in any game so far this season. They're going about their business quite nicely, they've got a nice cushion between themselves and the relegation zone, so they can play with a bit of freedom, even though safety is still the, the main sort of aim for them, they're by no means safe. Um, Pascal Gross has been a revelation for them this season, Glenn Murray's actually scoring goals, you know, they, they, they do carry some threats and we're going to have to be switched on. I don't want to make too many changes again, um, I imagine we will make two or three. Where they are is quite unpredictable. I mean, if, if I'm going to go through my 11 now, I think Mignolet, of course, will keep his place. Um, some feel might, might have been lucky to keep his place on the pitch uh, against Stoke when he brought Juve down, but you know he gets away with it. It turns out to be a good decision in the end. Um, Joe Gomez was excellent. He hasn't had a rest in a, in a couple of weeks. I think maybe Trent might come in, although he could maybe start against Spartak Moscow, where we need to... It's just got me to, you know, I mean, that's, that's a crucial game itself. So maybe Gomez stays in this one and Trent comes in there. I honestly don't know. Um, if, if I had a gun to my head, I'd probably say Trent starts this one and we play Gomez uh, in midweek. Uh, Clavin was ill in, mid, in uh, midweek, so Lovren played. Whether Lovren will keep his place off the back of that good performance remains to be seen. I think we might go for Matip and Clavin. Uh, and I'm going to pick Robertson to start. <laughs> I don't understand the Robertson situation, but I'm going to pick him to start. Midfield, Henderson will come back in, I'm sure. Whether Emre Chan stays, I don't know. Obviously, it depends if Mane's rested, if Will Coutinho play midfield on it. 
so many different questions and we won't know until two o'clock on Saturday, but I'm, I, my guess would be Henderson, uh, Vinaldum, and Coutinho. And then a Mane Salah for me in front three. The only other option would be to push for, uh, Coutinho into that left wing position instead of Mane, rest Mane for midweek and play Milner in midfield or Jan. It's unpredictable. It's it's this it's gonna we're gonna be like this every game between now and New Year's Day, I think. So um let's just see what Jurgen decides. I'm sure we're gonna have too much for Brighton. I mean they're eleven to two to win the game, we're one to two on or something. I think we're gonna run riot riot. Um, I think Salah's gonna score again, I think we're gonna win three 0 again. Um it's, I'm very confident at the moment. I mean, I was upset after Seville, I was upset after Chelsea, but I knew that once we came up against decent uh, sides that we should beat, uh, then it's a completely different kettle of fish. I mean, the, Stoke were happy for us to have all the ball in the first 25 minutes last night. Um, they had a spell after that, but mostly we had all the ball, and it was just about whether we could be bothered to up the tempo and, and really sort of put them to the sword. At times we did, at times we didn't. Um, obviously, I understand we've got to preserve energy. I'm not sure if, if the reason Chan was being so conservative at times was because it was actually an instruction uh, to sort of save your legs, don't run too much, don't turn too often, don't don't drive, just keep the ball, let's work them, let's frustrate them. And, and you know, we got the three that win in the end, so I'm obviously very happy with, with how the whole thing went. Uh, and if we do a similar thing this Saturday, then absolutely fantastic. I think we are going to win. And there we go. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. My scorers, I'm going to pick Salad to score twice and Firmino to get a goal. I feel like it's been a while for Firmino, especially away from home uh, in the league. Um, so there you go. 3-0. Leave a comment below with your predictions and any thoughts on Stoke away. And just your general feeling on Liverpool at the moment. I'm actually feeling pretty good, despite some complaints I've had in recent weeks. And obviously early on in the season when I wrote everything off, um, you know, I still would write our title challenge off. I say this in every video, but... Doesn't mean I can't be happy with how last night went and how everyone's playing at the moment. Um, so guys, subscribe if you're new. I'm not actually going to be able to do, well I'm not going to the game in Brighton, I'm not going to be able to actually do an instant reaction either. So I'm actually in Germany this weekend and there's going to be some day trip videos from there. So look out for those. In the meantime, I'll see you next time.